Have you ever wondered how some photographers achieve perfect water reflection shot like this in front of famous spots where it's kind of impossible to take such shots yet you wanted to achieve same results? Wait, are you going to tell them the secret? Of course, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get this result in Photoshop using minimum number of steps. I can't believe you're doing this. Why would you do it? Why not? Because people have always wondered how it's done and why would you tell them the secret? That's exactly why I wanted to share with them. Isn't it the reason why I make this video? Still, what if you run out of techniques to tell them? There is always something new to learn and share with them. So just go away and let's get into this video. What's up guys, I hope you're well, I'm Jack. We are gonna see something very interesting in this tutorial and one of my favorite techniques that I've used a couple of times in my images to create beautiful looking water reflection of places where I was not able to capture that in real life. Remember the times when you have a particular composition in mind and when you arrive at the spot, there is something blocking the view or uh, not allowing you to create the composition that you originally thought about. This exactly happened to me a couple of months ago when I was traveling in Budapest. I wanted to capture a picture of the Hungarian parliament building next to the waters. It's a very beautiful building and this happened. <laughs> Let me pull up the Google Maps to show you what situation I ran into. So this is the Hungarian parliament building located on the Danube River. By the way, it's the second longest river in Europe. And the style of the building is Gothic revival style building with the Renaissance revival style dome. It's a very beautiful uh, building as you can see right here. And the image that I had in my mind was to capture the building from the center like this and having the water in the front and get the reflection of the building in the water by doing a long exposure or capturing the image early in the morning when the water is quite still. But the problem that I ran into was this right here. So the boat was stationed in the center, which did not allow for me to capture the image that I wanted. If I took the image from here or here, the building is not in the center anymore. So what I did instead is took a boat ride on the water and took a couple of shots when the boat crossed the building. Also by capturing the picture from the boat allowed me to, uh, to make the image look like it's taken from a lower perspective. This is the image that I captured from the boat and as I mentioned to you, I wanted to capture a lower perspective image and this looks like it could have been even taken from the ground level. I have enough space in the foreground which will allow me to place the reflection that I will, I'm going to create right now. So the first step is to duplicate the parent layer by dragging it to create new layer. This creates a new layer that I wanted to create and I will do it once again because if I make any mistake, uh, I can just delete the layer and start working from the parent layer. This is just a personal preference. There is really no rule about it. And now I will rename this layers to reflection and the first layer to base. That's good. Now we have two layers to start working on. And uh, the next step is to invert the reflection so it looks like it's on the water. So for that, I press the shortcut key, command, control T or command T, right click and click flip vertical. Now it's inverted. Then the next thing I would do is reduce the opacity of this layer to around 20 to 30 percentage and this will allow me to see where this image is being placed and I don't want the images to overlap. So I will move it to the place where I wanted the uh, reflection to start. That's good and I'm happy with it and I press enter. As you see that there is now water on the sky and I wanted to delete it. So for that, uh, in situation like this image where there is a clear separation line running in between the image, it's super easy to do uh, and it's also the, the lazy way that I follow which is to select the rectangular market tool, make sure you have selected the reflection uh, layer right here and select the areas that you don't want to be seen in the final image like this and delete that layer. So right now there is, uh, the image looks clean and I will bring back the opacity of this layer to 100% just to see what uh, details that I have to work with. Now it looks amazing, it looks perfectly uh, mirrored but 
it doesn't look natural. There is no water characteristics in the image and this is what we are gonna introduce right now. So for that, I will once again select the reflection la uh, layer and go to filter, blur, and click on motion blur. And the first step I would do is make sure the angle is zero and uh, add the distance about 20 to 25. What this would do is uh, it will blur the image in the direction that I wanted like this so it looks like the water is flowing either left to right or right to left which is uh, natural and makes it look more uh, subtle and once again I will click on filter blur and motion blur and this time I will set the angle to 90 degrees and do the distance about 8 to 10 maybe and what this does is it'll uh, blur the image in a vertical direction so it really now looks like it can be on the water uh, if it is shot in the early morning it this can uh, be natural but the immediate problem that I recognize here is that there is a very clear separation line running between the original image and the reflection image, which I wanted to avoid. So what I do right now is click on the reflection layer and click on mask. And I will just select the brush and set the size about 100. Yeah, that looks good even one 200 and the hardness zero and make sure the opacity is about 30 to 40 maybe 35 in this case and I will just erase off this place right here so that it's kind of looks like it's blending to the parent image so when I zoom in it's not looking anymore like there is a very clear line uh, between the parent and the, and the reflection image, which is good. Now you can stop in this level. It looks nice. It looks like it's on the water, but still there is no texture to the water. And this is what I'm going to add right now by creating a new layer and select the, the, uh, the bucket tool and make sure you have white set on the foreground and just paint white. And next step is to go to filter, noise, and add noise. Make sure the amount is set to 400 percentage and monochromatic is selected. And then hit OK. Now what you have to do is go again to filter, blur, and click on motion blur. This time, once again, we have to set the angle to zero and make sure the distance is about 35 to 50 maybe this looks good and hit OK now once again I will reduce the opacity to about 30 percentage so as you can now see that in the reflection area there is this nice texture added to the water water area what I will do right now is once again press command T or control T and click distort and I wanted to make the water look like it's uh, coming towards you so the water is kind of vanishing towards the building and it's spread towards you so this I will do by distorting this layer to the place where the reflection is starting that's good and here as well I will move it slightly down and I will zoom out the image and I will pull this wide out on both the sides almost similar that's good and I will set the opacity about 30 to 40 I'm not gonna change too much uh, here and I will set the layer overlay to something like a linear light now you start to see that the water looks kind of natural and it's I can hide it look at it before and check the result right now it looks even more natural and it looks like could have been taken in the water and I will select once again the layer and I will reduce this to about 
even 12 to 13. The more subtle, the better. Now it looks like the water looks more natural. It has the reflection that you wanted to capture. And I'm, I'm happy with this result. Now I hit save and this will save the image in Lightroom right now. After saving the image in Photoshop, now I have the image in Lightroom where I will do my regular editing process. I have completed the editing process in Lightroom and let's compare the before and after. So this is the image that we started working on in Photoshop and this is the final image that I have after finishing edit in Lightroom. If you would like to learn my Lightroom editing process, check out the link that pops on the top right corner to see my step-by-step -step editing process. And if you are trying out this technique, feel free to tag me uh, at Susan's chat in Instagram so that I can check out your version and if I like it, I can do a shout out in my stories. I hope you like this tutorial. Like and comment on this video and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more videos like this and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Are you a photographer and wanted to make money in this field? Check out these videos right here. I have some useful tips for you to start making money in this field.